Welcome to Tomb of the Top Stones, an ongoing series exploring the world of top stone masks. In this episode, we veer off the yellow brick road to meet the classic witches of top stone. The company made many witches beginning in the 1950s. The two most iconic examples are the old hag and the headscarf witch. Before we properly meet these maidens and their many sisters, let's learn more about the history that inspired them. Witches have been with us since ancient times. In Greek mythology, the goddess Hecate presided over magic and spells. Circe was an enchantress who could change men into animals. The witch of Endor appears in the book of Samuel, summoning Samuel from the dead to deliver a prophecy to Saul. The church in the late 1400s declared witches to be heretics, sparking a period of atrocities that continued into the early 1700s. Anywhere from 40,000 to 80,000 people were executed during the European witch trials. The modern image of the witch began taking shape during this period. In the 15th century, witches were depicted riding on broomsticks. In 1606, Shakespeare's Scottish play introduced a famous trio of witches who cackled double double toil and trouble. The image of the diabolical witch endured. In 1692, witch hysteria broke out in Salem, Massachusetts. Twenty people would be executed. Witchcraft was decriminalized in Europe during the 1700s. In the closing years of the century, Francisco Goya painted scenes of witches' sabbaths and covens. The Brothers Grimm published the German fairy tale Hansel and Gretel in 1812, helping to establish the modern archetype of the child-eating wicked witch. Contributing to this archetype was Baba Yaga, an elemental cannibalistic witch from Russian folklore. In 1922, the Swedish film Hexen presented one of the greatest and most influential depictions of flying, satanic witches. In 1937, the iconic evil witch appeared in Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Two years later, MGM's Wizard of Oz brought the world the definitive Wicked Witch. Margaret Hamilton's cackling, green-skinned, broom-riding villain set the standard for all future evil movie witches and has never been surpassed. Unable to match Hamilton's iconic monster, movie witches shifted toward the sexy and romantic, like Veronica Lake in 1942's I Married a Witch and Kim Novak in 1958's Bell Book and Candle. The more traditional Wicked Witch archetype endured through the advent of Halloween mass merchandising. U.S. companies like Beistel and Denison, as well as German companies, made Halloween decorations that popularized the old world witch of fairy tales. The traditional witch, with her hooked nose and pointy hat, became a Halloween staple appearing on an endless variety of novelties, decorations, and costumes. And this is where we return to Topstone. The Connecticut-based company was founded in 1946. The famed illustrator Keith Ward owned the company, managed its staff, and sculpted every mask produced through 1961. When he sold the company, to Bland and Bland of New York. Ward stayed on as Topstone's chief designer for several more years. Topstone began producing rubber masks in 1947. Within two years, they had become a national sensation, according to a 1949 Associated Press news story 
that reported top stones masks were flying off the shelves and stores could not keep them in stock. In 1950, Topstone unveiled a new lineup of small masks that included a witch. The company would later designate these masks as the R-Line assortment. They covered the face but did not extend over the head. Over the next few years, Topstone would add more generic witches to this series, but the first would remain the most recognizable and would establish the style for Topstone's future witches. Here is that original Topstone R-Line witch that debuted in 1950. She's still like new today, probably because Topstone made these masks from a special compound called Lotol, developed by the Nagatuck Chemical Company. This witch is a bright fluorescent yellow. She was sold with an attached elastic band, the kind you would expect to find on a plastic mask. Like all of Topstone's R-Line masks, the witch seems small, almost child-sized by today's standards. But the line was originally marketed toward adult masquerading, not specifically trick-or-treaters. The witch's big sister arrived in 1955 when Keith Ward introduced a new, larger, over-the-head witch mask as part of its deluxe D-line assortment. The face looked very similar to the earlier witch, but this new version wore a headscarf that tied beneath her chin. Some collectors call her the Hooded Witch to differentiate her from Topstone's other witches. The D-Line Witch was a popular mask that popped up in a variety of media throughout the 50s and 60s. While not as ubiquitous as Topstone's Gorilla or Caveman, the witch did get around. One place she did not appear was the Captain Company mail order section in Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. It seems Topstone's witches and hags were not considered attractive enough to join the likes of the Melting Man and the Shock Monster in the mail order ads, though the witch did occasionally appear in photos elsewhere in the magazine. A competing horror magazine, Horror Monsters, did include the witch and old hag in their monster mailman ad pages during the 1960s. Now here is an original production example of the Keith Ward designed headscarf witch. Like her smaller sister, she has yellow skin, but it's a pale, dull yellow, not fluorescent like the earlier witch. The face is very similar to the earlier witch, with less pronounced jowls and a wider mouth. She seems a little less wicked and more exasperated than her sister. What a world, what a world, she's probably thinking. The bow beneath her chin appears on early examples of this mask, but it is absent on later versions. Topstone probably removed the bow to simplify production. In 2000, a stash of original Topstone masters was discovered in Connecticut. It is thanks to this find that thick, modern pulls of many Topstone masks are available on the collector market. This is one of two known existing urethane masters for the witch. Both were discovered in the historic find 22 years ago. These masters were reportedly made by Keith Ward's own hands. He would then deliver them to the Topstone factory where his staff would make plaster molds. The surviving masters are very fragile and new molds must be made very carefully. A new mold was made from the Witch Master many years ago, and a small number of thick pulls were produced. The pulls were small in size, 
and very difficult to find today. Topstone re-sculpted and reissued most of its iconic Keith Ward characters in the 1980s, long after Ward had left the company. Some of the re-sculpts look very similar to their earlier counterparts, but others were barely recognizable. The re-sculpted 80s witch looks very crude and clunky compared to Keith Ward's elegant original sculpt. Topstone produced her in a bright crayon yellow, but like many 80s Topstone masks, the rubber has discolored and hardened with time, taking away its brilliance. In this example, only the tip of the nose retains its original color. Throughout its history, Topstone made many masks depicting elderly women. These characters were often depicted as being scary or creepy. This led to protests as shown in this news photo. To this day, many people object to Halloween depictions of elderly people as monsters. But it was a different time in the early 1960s. Keith Ward thought it was time to update the witch character. A Topstone employee named Bill, who I interviewed, actually watched Ward sculpt the new witch, introduced in 1961 as the Old Hag. Bill said Keith Ward sculpted her from green clay, the same kind children used in school. He insisted on giving her deep undercuts, even though he knew it would make the production process more difficult. Keith Ward would not sacrifice quality to make production easier, Bill said. When Ward finished the sculpt, Bill pointed out that she didn't have a wart. Shouldn't a witch have a wart on her nose, he asked. Ward agreed and added a wart. And here is that magnificent old hag, complete with nose wart. The early versions of the mask were painted gray with white hair. Topstone would later change the color scheme to yellow skin and green hair. Both versions are very rare today. This example of the old hag has undergone light restoration and foam filling. But this example is completely unrestored and unfoamed, seen here in its original state. Unlike the earlier Snow White inspired witches, it is unclear what pop culture inspiration Keith Ward drew upon in designing this character or why the skin is gray. When compared side by side, the old hag's radically different color scheme makes it stand apart from the more quaint and traditional headscarf witch. Both are iconic masterworks of vintage Halloween imagery. Here is a later version of the old hag, still using the original Keith Ward sculpt. This mask is probably from the 1970s, based on photos from that period that show yellow-skinned hags. The bright green hair on this mask is almost gone. Very few old hags turn up on the collector market. The yellow version seems to be slightly more rare than the gray one, but both are very hard to find. I don't have the master for the old hag, unfortunately but I do have this modern thick pull taken from a mold made from the original master. The paint and hair are meant to resemble the 1970s yellow and green color scheme. This is the next best thing to having a master as it allows you to study the detail and the design of Keith Ward's original sculpture. This is a later re-sculpt of the hag, probably released in the late 1970s or early 1980s. At first glance, it looks like Ward's original sculpt. 
It isn't far removed from the original, but Topstone did add a layer of texture to refresh the mask and make it seem more contemporary. Later in the 1980s, Topstone completely resculpted the old hag. This version is even farther removed from Ward's original sculpt and somewhat resembles Warren Publishing's Uncle Creepy character. At first glance, both of these masks may seem identical, but the one on the right is actually a slightly different sculpt from the Uncle Creepy version on the left. You can see that on the mask on the right, the rubber is severely discolored. That is, of course, due to aging. Unlike the witch, the old hag has retained much of her original character through the decades. The original is the classic, but the 80s resculpts are great masks in their own right. Topstone made another unrelated witch during the 1980s. This is a Topstone knockoff of a Be Something Studios design. Topstone copied many Be Something Studios masks during the 1980s. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Topstone produced several witch costumes and makeup kits. These included traditional wicked witches and more up-to-date sexy witches. No plastic vacuform versions of the witch or old hag have surfaced but Topstone did make this plastic witch mask designed by Keith Ward. Topstone also made several children's masks based on witch designs. The witches of Topstone are often overlooked in discussions of the company's classic masks, but they have stood the test of time. Their beautiful sculpts and archetypal fairy tale character designs make them icons of Halloween. Halloween.